All right, so we're going to look at all the integration techniques you need to know for VCA Specialist Maths. There's only actually six mentioned in the study design. So integrating one on X to get log X with the modulus, using the inverse circular or inverse trig functions, the U substitutions, the trig identities, in particular, these double angle formulas for sine squared and cosine squared, partial fractions and integration by parts. So obviously there's some subtypes within each of those broad categories. We'll look at a simple example for each type in this video. Of course, you also need to know those integrals from maths methods. So anything from the methods formula sheet, um, polynomials, E, integral of one on X to obtain log without the modulus <laughs> and the basic trig integrals. All right, so we're gonna look at these six examples. Each one of those examples uses one or more of these integration techniques. If you've learned the techniques before, you can even pause the video if you like and have a think about which technique will be right for which integral. That's really important skill for your exam one is to be able to pick the right technique because just say it's a three or four mark integration question and you pick the wrong technique, um, it's actually very hard for you to get even a single method mark. So firstly, you wanna make sure you can pick the right technique and then hopefully you can apply it correctly um, and if you make a, a arithmetic mistake and you know and, and don't get the final answer, at least you've got two or three method marks. All right, so with this first integral, it is a U substitution. Um, probably the most common technique you'll need in your exam one. So with the U substitution, it's actually the reverse of the chain rule for differentiation. So generally what we'll need in the integral is du dx as part of that integral. So whatever we're going to um, use as a substitution for u, we want du dx there in the integral. So in the example we have here, we're going to let u be 2 minus x squared. Uh, it makes sense to do that because it's inside the square root function. du dx then will be minus 2x. That's good because we've actually got an x there in the integral. So multiply by a negative 2 and we've got the derivative there. So we can rewrite the integral like this with our function of u, our du dx, and because we've multiplied by negative two inside there, we need to multiply by negative a half on the outside just to make sure we haven't changed anything. Okay, so once we've expressed our integral like this, we then have what we want in order to be able to apply our u substitution and our integral will become one over root u or u to the negative a half du. Okay, we can easily integrate that or anti-differentiate that. Um, by adding one to the power to make it a power positive half, dividing by positive half, it's gonna cancel out this half. And that's pretty much it, okay? So we get our answer, which is negative square root two minus x squared plus c. Um, as I said, the u substitution is the reverse of the chain rule. So what we can do to check this answer is actually check it by differentiating it using the chain rule. How would we do that? So we've got two minus x squared to the power of a half, we would times down the half, power then would be negative a half, and we will multiply by the du dx, which will be negative two x. Okay, so that's a good way to check um, that we've actually done our u substitution correctly, and you can always do that. All right, the next type of u substitution is slightly different, called a linear substitution, where our u is going to be linear. So if we have a look at this example, what we want to do is let u equal 2 minus x. Um, that's really good because the derivative is just going to be, in this case, negative 1. And we can always introduce any constant we'd like into our integral just by multiplying it in and making sure we adjust for it on the outside. So what we're going to do with this x squared on the top then is rewrite that in terms of u. Um, we can easily do that because u is 2 minus x, so x is going to be 2 minus u. This is a definite integral with terminal zero and one. We also wanna change those out from X values to U values. Now, if X is one, U is gonna be two minus one. Well, that's still one. Um, but when X is zero, U is going to be two. So by changing the terminals, then we can express the whole integral in terms of U. So it's going to look like this. Um, one goes to one, zero goes to two. X squared becomes two minus u all squared. And on the bottom there, square root u, du. Now the negative sign came because du dx is negative one. We need to introduce that negative there. Uh, sometimes people write like dx is equal to negative du and think of it as a substitution. 
So that's fine. Once we have that, we can expand the brackets on the top and simplify by dividing through all these terms by u to the half. Then it's gonna simplify to this. So from there, it's really just a methods integral. I'm not saying that it's particularly easy, especially when we're gonna sub in um, the terminals, like subbing in two uh, and evaluating those in terms of roots. But I won't go through the arithmetic here. If you do have a go at it, this should be your answer. Okay, good luck. All right, so we're gonna look at this one next. Which of these techniques do you think would be right in this case? It's actually all of those top three we're going to use. All right, so the first step we're gonna do with something like this is we're gonna split it up into the sum of two integrals. Okay, just splitting up the denominator into two X and then plus one. Notice we couldn't use a u substitution straight off because the derivative of x squared plus one is two x. So we, we can't sub out the whole two x plus one for a multiple of du dx. This is why we split it up into the sum of two things. So this one, we can use a u substitution. It's actually gonna be a natural logarithm. On the denominator there, we have x squared plus one. Uh, so if we let that be u, we'll have integral of one over u, du, uh, it's just going to be log. For this integral, this is where we use an inverse trig function. So if we look at the formulas on your formula sheet, and particularly that third one, hopefully we'll see this integral is, is none other than, than this case where a is equal to one. Okay, so that integral is just going to be an inverse tan. And the first integral log of modulus x squared plus one. Okay, I haven't bothered writing out let u equal x squared plus one to u dx is equal to two x. You can do that. Um, or you can just recognize we have our derivative there on the top. And so we're going to have an integral which is log x squared plus one. We could also check that using a chain rule. So if you were to differentiate that function, uh, you would have one over x squared plus one you would then multiply by your du dx, which is 2x. Okay, I want to do one more inverse trig function. So something like this where we have to do a little bit of manipulation first. So we could actually use either of those top two integrals. We're going to use an inverse sine, um, but because we've got a 5x squared there, what we can do to simplify that is take a common factor of 5 out on the denominator there. Okay, then it looks like a squared minus x squared if this four over five is that a squared. The three of a square root five, we can just take that out of the integral completely. And then we have something which looks like our top formula there. So it's going to be inverse sine of x divided by two over root five. When we divide by a fraction, we flip it and times. So we're going to have this here. Okay, so there's another example of an inverse trig function which required a little bit of manipulation. And that's also quite a common thing on your exam one as well, to have to do that with either an inverse sine, inverse cos, or inverse tan. All right, sine to the four. Probably pretty easy to guess this is going to be a trig identity. And if we look at those formulas that we have on our formula sheet, we have formulas for sine squared and cosine squared, both in terms of cos two x. So obviously we're going to use the one for sine squared here. And we're going to have to use it twice. Okay, we have sine x to the power of four, which is sine squared squared. So the first time we do the substitution, we're going to get uh, this half bracket one minus cos two x, but that is still squared. What we can do with that is expand the brackets. Okay, expand that perfect square. And those first two terms we can integrate pretty straightforward. The third term is a cos squared. Well, we can apply this formula. Okay, it's a similar trick. So integrating the first two terms, we'll get x minus sine two x. And for the third term, just got the one quarter out the front there. And then we'll do our substitution to replace cos squared two x with half bracket one plus cos four x now. Okay, because our original argument was 2x, we now need double that. Okay, so then we can integrate those second two bits and we'll have our antiderivative here. Uh, we could clean that up a little bit, group the like terms, but anyway, it's going to be equivalent to what we have there. 
All right, so we're up to this one. Can you recognize what it is? Hope you got it. It's an inverse trig function. If we look at our formula sheet again, uh, this one is a straight application of the inverse sign where a squared is two. So we're going to get inverse sine of x over the square root of two plus e. All right, so for this one, this is going to be a partial fraction. We're also gonna use a log once we separate it using partial fractions. So partial fractions is useful whenever we can uh, factorize what's on the denominator. There's several types which you need to know. This is the first type where we have two linear factors. Uh, the second type is we have one repeated factor. So what we need in our partial fractions is uh, x minus a and x minus a all squared. The third type is if we have um, a quadratic factor which cannot be factorized. In that case, we need a linear term on the top so for example, we can call it bx plus c. So we won't go through an example of those second types here. Um, for our example, it's the first type because we can factorize x squared minus one into x plus one, x minus one. So we set up our partial fractions. We wanna solve then for these constants a and b. And what we do is equate the numerators. So if I was going to equate left-hand side and right-hand side, I would have to multiply this left fraction by x minus one and the right fraction by x plus one. Okay, in that case, the numerator there must be equal to two x plus one. And the way it turns out, this has to be equal for all x values. So I can conveniently sub in any x value, for example, x equal to one, and this term will disappear, be zero, and we can see b must be three over two. Then sub in x is negative one, this term will be zero, and we'll get, if we sub in negative one here, we'll get negative one on the left and negative two a, so we can work out that a is equal to a half. Okay, so great, we can sub those back in and this is now our integral in partial fraction form. Probably we write it like one over two bracket, three over two bracket. And what's gonna happen when we integrate that is we're just going to get natural logs, okay? Cause it's basically one over x, just one over x plus one, one over x minus one. So if we take the constants out, we get a half log modulus x plus one, three on two log modulus x minus one. Don't forget the modulus. All right, so there's an example of partial fractions. Um, don't forget you can do partial fractions on your CAS calculator too, just using the expand function. All right, so what could this last integral be? Well, there's only one left. And it's integration by parts. Now this was new to the study design in 2023. And what it is, uh, we have a formula on our formula sheet, but it's actually just the reverse of the product rule for differentiation. So what we're looking for is in our integral, something that can be u, something that can be dv dx. In general, the u should be something that when we differentiate it, it's going to become simpler. And the dv dx, well, firstly, it needs to be something that we can integrate because we need this function v here. Um, and then this v du dx term, again, needs to be something that we can integrate. So in our example, we're going, so in our example, we're going to let u be x squared and dv dx be sine x. So letting u be x squared, when we take our du dx, it's gonna be simpler, okay? 2x is simpler than x squared. Um, when we integrate dv dx, we get negative cos x. Well, that is really no, more complex than the original function. And if you tried the other way with u equals sine x, dv dx equals x squared, um, you'd find you wouldn't get anywhere because when you integrate x squared, you'll get a cubic function. You just keep getting something more and more complex. All right, so plugging these into our integration by parts formula, we get u times v minus v times du dx. So the first part is done. And for the second part, we can actually use integration by parts again. So if we let u be x here, dv dx equals cosine x, our du dx is gonna be simpler, it's just a constant. 
and V equal be sine X. So then for this integral here, we get U times V minus V times du dx. Then we can integrate sine X, that's straightforward, and we're pretty much done. So there's an example where we're using integration by parts, and in that case, we actually had to use it twice. The one in last year's exam one was similar to that in that you needed to use integration by parts twice. All right, so there's a brief overview of all integration techniques you need to know. Now it's your turn to practice.